Hey, welcome back everybody. Happy Sunday evening. Hopefully we had a wonderful weekend out there and uh, kind of knocking on the doorstep of the work week here and uh, we're going to have a good bit to track this week with now potential tropical cyclone uh, six, I believe. I might have the number wrong, but either way, we do have a potential tropical cyclone uh, in the Atlantic to track. Also some uh, more waves rolling in off of Africa here uh, that we're going to continue to monitor as we go through the rest of August. And that'll really be, I think, kind of the big theme through the rest of this month is just uh, how these waves uh, strengthen and or don't strengthen as they come off of Africa and get into that main development region of the Atlantic. And we're going to take a look at that in today's video, again, for potential impacts into the Caribbean uh, going within really the next couple of days to potential major hurricane status uh, out near uh, Bermuda to, again, uh, what kind of conditions we're seeing on down the road here for tropical season. Uh, so with that said, welcome if you're new. Uh, definitely, uh, if you haven't already subscribed, we are trying to get to 10,000 by the end of hurricane season, knocking on the doorstep of 9,000. Uh, which is great because we just uh, were at 8,000 uh, only about a month ago. So we've seen some pretty great uh, growth here recently uh, and trying to continue that. Also like the video and hit that bell for the latest notifications and uh, comment. Let me know where you're watching from and what you're seeing uh, out there in your neck of the woods. Now with that said, let's go ahead and jump on into that forecast. Now taking a look at the Atlantic Basin here, we do have a couple areas to note now. This is our new potential tropical cyclone. Again, that will bring impacts to the Antilles, potentially Puerto Rico, and uh, very likely Bermuda as well uh, as we go later on into uh, this coming week. And then after that, cannot rule out impacts potentially even to portions of Atlantic Canada on down the road. So if you're watching in any of those areas, uh, you're really going to want to pay attention to this storm. Now behind it, we have another area uh, of some uh, stormy activity rolling off the coast of Africa. Now right now, our models are not indicating uh, much development with that one, but uh, we will continue to monitor it for you. And uh, we'll take a look again at some of the longer range uh, ensembles here on down the road uh, and give you a general idea of uh, kind of uh, what, what we're expecting there with uh, these future waves. But that's a current look at the Atlantic. Uh, again, uh, some pretty active things ongoing here. Now, if we zoom this in a little bit more here, uh, again, we will uh, you know see these other waves. But really the big one here again is our new poten uh, potential tropical cyclone. Excuse me. Uh, this uh, very likely will become a tropical depression or tropical storm Ernesto sometime tomorrow uh, as it approaches again the Antilles. And we are seeing pretty impressive spin on satellite here. Also, some convection has been kind of, uh, you know, trying to hold on throughout the day. If there's one thing that's maybe indicating this storm isn't really strengthening all that much, it would be the lack of deep convection uh, kind of firing near the center here. But again, uh, getting uh, getting closer, getting better organized, and again, also like I said, a uh, pretty feisty wave right on behind it, just much more broad and is going to need much more time to kind of organize before uh, getting any kind of name, should it even try to do that. Now, latest, uh, here we go, uh, the latest uh, track from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, again, not a named storm yet, but the new potential tropical cyclone method that they've added is really great for issuing those watches and warnings early enough. And again, uh, right now, here it is, just kind of out here in the middle of the Atlantic, sun setting on it right now. Uh, just a 30 mile an hour, you know, would be depression if it had that uh, well-defined center of circulation. But right now, just an open wave that is moving towards depression status. Now, with that said, we are expecting a tropical storm by the time the system gets towards uh, Antigua uh, and uh, these uh, other islands in here, Guadalupe and uh, the, um, excuse me, the St. Kitts and Nevis. Also, if I mispronounce any of these islands, let me know. I do apologize. It's uh, me being a dumb American at the end of the day. So, uh, but uh, either way, in these northern sections of the Antilles, kind of north of Dominica and Martinique here, uh, are the islands that are likely to see impacts. And because of that, we do have tropical storm watches up uh, for these areas. Now, beyond that, we could also see tropical storm conditions into the British Virgin Islands and the Virgin Islands. Uh, we'll have to watch out for that. Those impacts would come Tuesday into Wednesday. The latest forecast is for a pretty strong tropical storm uh, at that time frame. Now, the good news is uh, for our folks in Puerto Rico, the storm looks to try to turn north before getting to you, although you are still in the cone, so don't completely uh, let your guard down. And the other good news is that's when it really strengthens is as it kind of pulls north here uh, into the open Atlantic. Again, here are the Bahamas on uh, the left-hand side of your screen. Here's Bermuda uh, up to the north. Uh, so kind of right out here in no man's land for much of the middle and end of this coming week. But unfortunately, you'll notice uh, expecting a strong Category 2 borderline major hurricane here come next Friday. Uh, and uh, Bermuda here is right in the path of that cone. So uh, you folks in Bermuda are really going to want to watch it. And same for you folks up here in eastern Canada. Uh, into portions of Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. Obviously, the cone isn't near you yet, but uh, you could see impacts out of this within the next 10 days. 
<clears throat> All right, latest rainfall forecast, uh, a pretty good amount on the way here. Now, we do have this broken down between inches or millimeters, depending on where you're watching here on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, but a good 100 to 150 millimeters of rainfall possible, again, through the northern Antilles. Puerto Rico uh, could see a good 6 to 8 inches of rainfall, especially on the southern end of the island there, where we have uh, some terrain that is going to kind of really enhance those totals. Uh, places could see more than 8 inches locally. So uh, a pretty good tropical system here rainfall-wise and something we're going to want to watch. So if you're vacationing out here or if you live out here, uh, expect, uh, expect some impacts here from rainfall. Also, winds will be... Uh, not a super big concern, but a concern we do have a pretty good chance of tropical storm force winds uh, into, again, these northern islands. But uh, luckily, uh, not something that we're not used to around here. Obviously, we've seen tropical storms before, uh, but uh, either way, should this storm intensify any more than is currently expected, uh, you're going to want to stay tuned for that detail. Uh, and then also, again, Bermuda now in uh, the potential force of tropical storm force winds, and those chances will likely go up uh, for you folks out in the Bermuda. So, uh, again, uh, this is uh, a lot of people call this a fish storm, mainly a lot of people in the lower 48 of the United States, but uh, definitely not a fish storm by any means. So again, we've got islands out here uh, and then Canada on down the road. Obviously, you are also human, too. So uh, we'll be uh, we'll be watching it for you and uh, we'll keep you updated. Now, latest spaghetti models. Uh, again, pretty good confidence here right now on this track into those northern islands of the Antilles, likely missing Puerto Rico uh, just to the east of the island there. And then uh, from there on out, we'll have to watch Bermuda. Exactly how close does it get to the island or does it make an impact right on the island uh, is also a very real possibility here on down the road. Now, intensity forecast. Uh, again, we're feeling very confident that this will be at least Hurricane Ernesto. There's a pretty high likelihood it'll be major Hurricane Ernesto uh, come sometime this week again before getting to Bermuda, but after kind of getting north of Puerto Rico in that time frame. Uh, but for you folks in the next 48 hours that are going to see impacts, again, looking at a pretty feisty tropical storm, cannot completely rule out a hurricane. We've seen it before. These storms kind of have a mind of their own and like to really intensify pretty quickly. Uh, so, you know, the, it's a less likely scenario right now, but it is likely enough. I want you to know it's possible uh, that we could see that happen. So, um, again, either way, a strengthening storm here through the long run. All right, let's take a look at some model guidance here. We will start with the latest GFS or the American model. Let's just see if this happens to have updated to 18Z yet. Yeah, not quite. So uh, again, this is uh, the latest run we have from this afternoon. Here we go. Uh, storm developing. This is Tuesday afternoon. Uh, and uh, you'll notice uh, really Tuesday evening as well for you folks locally. Uh, we've got a pretty feisty little tropical storm. We're working on through again right where that cone said, bringing that heavy rainfall. Those rainfall totals I just showed you are going to be likely in this time frame uh, and some gusty winds as well. Now we get this into Wednesday afternoon, and um, now at this point, the storm moving through the Virgin Islands and the British Virgin Islands uh, and getting north of Puerto Rico as well. Again, heavy rainfall will be a concern, some gusty winds, uh, but all things considered, still a tropical storm on this run. Now it's after that that things go a little crazy. Uh, wind shear relaxes, the ocean just has really hot uh, sea surface temperatures and ocean content, or uh, you know, deeper uh, warm water, I should say. Uh, and um, dry air also looks to not be that big of a factor, and because of it, the storm really explodes pretty quickly uh, into a strong major hurricane between Bermuda and the Bahamas and kind of Hispaniola in this area, uh, or a lot of people like to call it the Bermuda Triangle, if you will, uh, you know, maybe kind of on the edge of it, not quite completely in it, but uh, uh, again, in that area, a strong hurricane developing <clears throat> and, uh, you know, moving towards the island of Bermuda. Now, I'm going to circle Bermuda. I know it's super hard to see on this map. Here's the island. And I'll keep that circle just so you can kind of see uh, as the storm moves ahead. This is into our Saturday, this coming Saturday. So six days from now, you'll notice the island takes basically a direct hit from the latest model guidance here from the GFS uh, from a major hurricane. Now, uh, the good news for Bermuda is it's such a small island that uh, it's, it's going to be easy to miss. But, um, you know, right now the models are really indicating this could be a direct hit. And the GFS isn't the only model. I'll show you the European next year. But before we do... Uh, let's kind of zoom things out and take a look at you folks uh, up into Canada uh, as the storm continues going through next weekend. So uh, we'll move this into next Sunday afternoon. Here we go. A strong, again, major hurricane uh, moving northward, getting to about the same latitude as the northeastern United States. And you'll notice here's uh, Nova Scotia. Here's Newfoundland. Uh, not very far from you folks up there into Canada. Uh, and uh, again, scrapes the islands here, uh, especially uh, Newfoundland. Now, Nova Scotia, it's a little bit further, uh, but for you folks there in Newfoundland, uh, again, kind of scraping the island. And then after that, uh, moving on out of here and then potentially 
uh, if anyone happens to be watching up into Europe, could get a pretty feisty storm through Ireland uh, and uh, potentially the United Kingdom as well. So that's the latest uh, from the GFS model. We'll take a look at the European. Same general idea, to be uh, completely honest with you. They're agreeing pretty well. Uh, again, a tropical storm here going into Tuesday afternoon, a little bit further north and a little bit weaker on the European model, but still impacts would remain basically the same. Tropical storm conditions, heavy rainfall, uh, and some rough seas for you folks there. And then again, strengthens near the Virgin Islands, but then pulls it north. Now, uh, the European goes a little bit further um, west here before pulling north, but it's still north of Puerto Rico, uh, but you would still see some rain bands out of it and some gusty winds. Uh, out of this come Tuesday and Wednesday. Now after that, uh, the European joins the rest of the world, pulls this storm north, and strengthens it pretty quickly here into a major hurricane. Again, let me circle Bermuda again for you. Here's the island of Bermuda. Uh, here's a major hurricane Friday afternoon, this coming Friday, uh, and just barely missing the island to the east as, again, a strong, probably Category 3 uh, storm around these pressure values. So um, that's, uh, that's something we'll have to watch out for. One model goes right through the island. Another one, you know, is close, but not quite there. So unfortunately, you know, to get, uh, to get the forecast for an island that small pinpoint accurate, we're just going to really have to wait and see uh, as we get a little bit closer here over the next week or so. Now, zooming this out for you folks again into Canada, here we go. Another uh, another model here is showing a strong storm. Now, this one a little bit further from you folks into eastern Canada, but still would see some pretty big uh, waves out there uh, and some uh, you know rough ocean conditions uh, should you be in the market that uh, involves being on the ocean, uh, you know, fishing or something like that, I mean. Uh, so again, a, a miss on this model, but still close enough that we need to watch it. And then also another thing I'll note here, uh, just look at this wave train coming off of Africa. Look at these areas of low pressure uh, with these, uh, you know, areas of uh, increased thunderstorm activity. Also another wave right here uh, on the long range here for the European model. So we, we're likely to see an uptick for sure into some tropical activity here in the long run, even after this. Just want to quickly point that out here. But uh Taking a look at uh, steering currents here for what will be Ernesto. Uh, here is the storm. This is this Wednesday afternoon. And again, I've shown this map plenty of times, but in case you're new, I'll show it again. Uh, high pressure, you know, off towards the, uh, the Azores here and those islands. High pressure up into the Hudson River Valley and the Hudson Bay. Uh, and then, um, you know, kind of an off ramp or a trough here kind of in between this area of blue. Uh, is kind of breaking up the steering that would push the storm towards the United States. And because of that, uh, it's looking more and more likely that this storm will take that off ramp uh, and move up uh, the, uh, you know, out to sea route. Now, again, I say out to sea, that doesn't mean we're not going to see potential uh, impacts into Canada. Latest uh, ensembles from the European. Uh, here we go. Uh, the potential of, uh, you know, cannot completely rule out a landfall into Nova Scotia or Newfoundland. Now, the good news is, most of these models keep it offshore, but another thing I'll note is they really strengthen this storm. So uh, we're likely to see some pretty impressive satellite imagery of this system, uh, you know, out here into the Atlantic near Bermuda. So again, uh, people keep saying fish storm, Bermuda and Eastern Canada, do not let your guard down. Uh, could see a pretty powerful storm here that either moves over you or is at least close enough you want to watch it. Uh, and the GFS and its ensembles, uh, excuse me, uh, are kind of uh, showing the same general idea. Most of them keep it offshore from you folks, but uh, close enough. And again, if I can find Bermuda on this map, let's see if we can. Uh, yeah, it's this little island right here. So uh, if uh, if uh, you're watching in Bermuda, you'll notice we've got <laughs> we've got a ways to go before we really nail down exactly where this one is going for you. But uh, we will continue to do that. All right. So we are also going to see likely the uptick in some tropical excuse me tropical activity over the next couple of weeks here. Uh, from the Climate Prediction Center Global Tropics Hazard Outlook. Again, this week and getting into the middle of August, highest chance of tropical activity at the top right of your screen here uh, is going to be in that region where we are expecting the storm to become a major hurricane. After that, uh, basically the entire Atlantic is kind of open for business, especially uh, the main development region. And I didn't pull it up, but we're going to pull it up on the fly here. Uh, and so give me one second while we do this. Uh, let's see if we have any ensembles after the fact. Uh, for some of our storm systems here on down the road. So, all right, let's uh, move this down. These are the latest GFS ensembles, 12Z. This is 240 hours out. So uh, nothing showing up right now in the long range on our ensembles, at least on the GFS. We'll take a look at the European uh, and see what it's showing here in the long run. 12Z, uh, update the plot here. Again, you're kind of seeing the behind the scenes here. 
so yeah, again, nothing, nothing really showing up right now in the long range, but uh, I do expect over the next couple of days and through the next week, we likely will see uh, an uptick in, you know, more, more on this map. But right now, uh, what would be Ernesto is really the only thing to track uh, that has any legs from our models within the next uh, week or so. Uh, and we will continue to do that. But uh, again, uh, after that, we are expecting conditions to become more favorable for tropical development here uh, towards peak hurricane season getting towards uh, September here. And you can see that here on this map. This basically just shows where are conditions favorable for uh, thunderstorm growth or development in the atmosphere over the tropical Atlantic, indicating tropical waves. Uh, again, purple being favorable, the red orangish colors being not so favorable. So this is uh, getting two weeks or so out from now. Again, you'll notice uh, right out here into the main development region, uh, likely going to see a good amount of divergence aloft that's going to make room for those thunderstorms to develop at the surface uh, and try to, um, you know, get their act together and maybe turn into some sort of tropical system. Uh, and then by the time we get into the first week of September, uh, you'll notice again kind of through the Caribbean and into that main development region of the Atlantic uh, should see those conditions continue. And then by the time we get towards peak hurricane season, the Caribbean really uh, will become an area that we will want to watch here in the long run. So, uh, that is the latest here from uh, what, again, is likely to become uh, Ernesto here and everything else that's kind of on down the road. Uh, so, yeah, I appreciate you joining me this evening. I'll keep you updated here in the long run on what we're watching. But right now, Ernesto is the main thing. Uh, and then just kind of wait for something else to gain some likes here. So with that said, y'all have a great rest of your weekend and your evening. And I'll see you all to start the week bright and early tomorrow morning.